So, a very, very, very uh, different. Uh, so basically, the last time we um, we had a conversation about the team's potential for spring. I think if we keep doing that, I think it's quite uninteresting. So we were going to do a tier list base off of uh, current form, uh, which is a very interesting conversation. I think current form, uh, things might change, you know, things might change next week. This is what I believe their current form is uh, based off of like, if, if these teams play each other tomorrow, who do I expect to win in a BO3? Okay. I think that um, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, uh, cares about, of course, current uh, level of performance. And additionally, also uh, draft understanding, you know, meta read. Uh, these are like very, very important details, you know, very important details. So current form, who is currently looking the best? This is not a prediction for what's going to happen at MSI. This is not going to be a prediction of how spring ends. This is current form. Current form. That's all. So, first team, the team that current form has impressed me the most is Gen G. I think that um, the Canyon and Chovy experiment is super, super clearly working. Uh, these are just two players that are playing insanely well. I think that the rest of the roster is just constructed of absolute demons. You know, still some question marks in regards to Gen G, uh, how they will fare deeper into seasons. You know, there's some question marks about. Keen's performance, Chovy's performance when it comes to internationals, because we, when you are an S, you're supposed to be like a world's contender, right? You're supposed to be a favorite coming into the world championship. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, currently these tangible effects, uh, reviewing them and applying them is nonsensical when we look at the current form. Right now, Genji is looking like the strongest team in terms of performance. Someone that has really, really stood out to me, I feel like Pays is like, you know, Pays had an incredible first year. He won back-to-back -back LCK titles, but he took a little bit of a backseat uh, after some changes in the meta where, where uh, there was this Afelio Zeri uh, trend and period where, where some 80s were really, really popping off. And I think Pays took a backseat where everything shifted, right? And I think that was an issue that Genji faced as a whole, not only Pays, but we are looking at those small details when we are looking at a team that could potentially be a world's contender. But this time around, I feel like Pace is really performing good. Like Pace is even performing better than last year. And that is really, really good to see. Really good to see. I think that Genji currently is the team with the best form. Uh, as a follow up, I would say, you know, uh, like when it came to spring potential, I definitely put T1 a lot higher than I do now, but in current form, you know, the issue with T1 is just that I don't think T1 draft-wise are exciting. I think owner's form is is not as good as it was at the World Championship, which is, of course, a big ask. But right now, owner's form is not looking great. A lot of the T1 wins happen because Zeus is playing Aatrox. I don't like this whole Nami identity that T1 has taken up on. You know, like, they couldn't, they lost to Genji in a very brutal manner. I feel like the last four drafts that they made, uh, barring maybe the last one where it's, like, more evenish. I think that, um, I think that, um, you know, T1 aren't there yet, you know, T1's current form, it's like T1, I'm excited for them in playoffs, I'm excited for them at MSI, I expect them to, 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 to find that form again, because it's a team that has done very well internationally, regardless of what you want to say about the second place, uh, you know, uh, second place placements, uh, if it wasn't T1, that record would be a lot more impressive, okay? T1 won the World Championship. I expect them to be a lot better as, as things proceed. But currently, I would put Billy Billy ahead of them in terms of performance level. I think the Billy Billy is the demon of, of the LPL. LPL, I think it's, it's important to put LPL in, in the context of what it is. Uh, LPL as a region is a lot tougher than the LCK. Because the way the rosters are construed are they are filled with OTPs, there are demons in certain ways. And um, I think that um, in the end, right, when it came to like how tough the competition is in Bilibili and in LPL, LCK, 
I think that the lower end teams play with a very high level of respect. And I think that um, the odds of an upset happening in the LCK is so unlikely. I think initially, just because LPL has 17 teams and it's a single round robin, it makes it a lot harder to prepare for specific opponents. Not that it's harder, but it's less efficient than to focus on yourself. So, Billy Billy, in terms of their form, I think they have good meta read. I don't see a necessarily, necessarily any flaw in terms of how they draft. I think that everyone can play everything. I think that now Billy Billy with Knight, they are a very complete team. And now when we have, um, you know, Ari come into the picture, Annie come into the picture, you know, Knight, there's never a meta with Knight where you feel like he's going to be missing out. So Billy Billy, currently second best in form for me. Uh, I... I really, really like Billy Billy. This is where it becomes a little bit tougher, right? I think I think the next one in line is tougher to, to say. Someone in chat, like, I predicted Genji to beat T1. I think even before the series, Genji had better form than T1. Um, in my previous tier list, I feel the need to always clarify this. So for, sorry if I sound like a one-string banjo. Um, in my previous tier list, that was a expectation on how teams are going to end spring. So this is current form, which is a very different tier list. I just thought it was a little, it would be a little bit more interesting to come back to a current form tier list. So T1, you know, still, you know, there's some question marks in terms of how they approach the draft. I still think that mechanically they showcase a lot. I think that Faker Ari is probably one of his weaker champs. He has some memorable bad performance on that champion, but even today I think he did decent as the game continued. I think the resistance that T1 face, besides when facing Genji, is very limited. And I think that uh, when it comes to the BO5s, is where we will see a lot of fireworks when it comes to Genji. But T1, in terms of the draft read and um, where they are at currently, I think that T1, you know, they, they, they fall behind. And I think that um, you, you could even argue that, uh, you know, this isn't super clear, like how, how this would jump. I think um, I think T1 mechanically super, super good. I think if T1 is preparing tomorrow for a best of five and they're playing a tournament, their approach to, to, to things is going to be vastly different. We're talking about current form. And current form, the level of League of Legends isn't super great. And I think a lot of that falls on draft read and also owner's form. And I think uh, just um, yeah, I think I think that's that's it. So, Top Esports, Top Esports. I'm happy that the world gets to see more cream. Uh, I'm so happy that Top Esports gets to see more cream. Uh, he's a fantastic player. I'm happy that Jackie Love finally has a great support, right? He is laning with Mako, and Mako is performing super good. And I think that, uh, you know, 369 speaks for himself, and Tian is also showing good form. Tian playing his Rel, his Inzao, he's the guy who got Rel Penta, playing top esports right now, is the second best team in the LPL. The next team in line is FPX. FPX. I was not so sold on FPX. I was completely sold on on Milky Way. Very sold on Milky Way. Milky Way is a proven product, MVP of me of the LPO, you know? MVP of the LPO. I think that Milkman is so good. But this series against JDG, what it showed me is a continuous Clear identity in draft. Very clear identity. When I saw Azir being disabled, I thought that Kerr would be in trouble. Most of his games are indeed on Azir. When FPX took wins because they had Senna and Life is a very good player in terms of playing wacky shit like Orn and so forth. I thought, wow, this is not that big of a deal. But when they won that M Misfortune game against Toby Esports. FPX showed to very clearly that they are a team with a very valid identity and have players that can actually play the game. That series, that 2-0 against JDG showed to me a very new side to, to FPX. That is the Zhao Lao Hu can actually 
carry some games, you know? They contested 2v2 super, super well. Milky Way still performed like a fucking demon in those series. And also, when I was approaching the series, a lot of team players and a lot of homies in the chat said, FPX, they are like, like FPX is going to win. And I thought, you know, in my mind, it's like, oh, it's all Milky Way hype. This is not going to happen. I don't see a world where Ruler and Missing are not going to defeat Dioktam and Life. This was the first series in Dioktam's pretty long career of facing up against Ruler. The first series he has won. I think he's 15 and 1 uh, Ruler against Dioktam. I didn't think that they were on the same level at all. But Life and Dioktam really pulled it together. They had the Rumble game. They had um, they, ha they had a fantastic series. The Rumble support was a juicer. And... Um, the point is, FPX, Milky Way was a proven factor, but FPX are in really, really good form. Really, really good form. And I think they deserve to be in the fifth place here. Next one in line. JDG below FPX because of only one series. In terms of current form, the thing is, JDG, JDG has been quite sloppy. JDG has been quite sloppy. I don't think they've been that clean. And uh, I think that they got away with it in other cases. I think that, um, you know, the struggles of JJD right now, I feel like um, how their solo laners contribute to this team feels very off. 369 and Knight, their contribution was very, very clear, and JJD contribution, like their identity, was super, super evident. When it comes to JDG, I think that they win most of their games because Ruler and Missing and also Kanavi are just better. In the hype of Milky Way, I think Kanavi has had a very thunderous split. Like Kanavi has had a very, very strong split. Additionally, I think JDG, in this lack of identity, I can't place them higher, right? When it comes to playing tank stop, it isn't so easy to just slot in tank stop. It's not that easy. And um when it comes to when it comes to JDG, in a world where they find that identity again, and and Yagao and Flandre find a very solid foundation for what they need to play to succeed in this roster, I think um, you know uh, JDG is definitely a team that is going to go higher. But once again, I repeat, this is current form. Current form is a very different conversation than the long term. The long-term view for me still the, looks very similar in comparison to still looks very similar to the previous tier list that I made. In terms of the long term, I imagine JDG as a team to be higher than FPX. FPX in the long term, they need to prove themselves that they can last through different matters when it comes to all the players. But I think Milky Way is going to do super super good. How are they going to, you know, work in the long term? Because what's cool, right? What's cool, right, about FPX is that you have Shaula who that likes to play carries. You have then Care who's always looking in Nico Annie to supply their mid laner, their jungle with any form of CC, any any form of fighting pressure that he needs, right? Which allows him to play carries. Uh, this is a very clear identity. Life is also filling the right champion for the composition very often. I like this, you know, I like this. Keep in mind, I repeat, this is current form. Some FPX series have definitely been rough. That's why I was not a star a stark believer. I was not a big believer of FPX. I think this JDG series is, is really, really big. Do we consider the patch adaptivity here too? No. This is current form. Current form, current patch, current level, they play tomorrow. This is what it is. I will not repeat this anymore, guys. I will not repeat this anymore. I sound like a one string banjo here, guys. It's bang, bang, bang. Next in line, 
Do you think 2024 JDG is better than 2022 JDG? Currently, no. 2022 JDG was still fucking good. All right. Next in line, we have to choose between Hanwha Life and G2. Those are, those, those are the names that come. Those are the names that come up next. Plain and simple. I think Hanwha Life, I can't put G2 above Hanwha Life just yet because I don't think that their early game is a proven enough quality, right? I think the G2 macro wise do at a high level enough now to actually beat and compete the majority of LCK and LPL teams. But my main concern, right, when it comes to that comparison is how does G2 actually fare out of the early game? Their macro, their macro is super, super high level. There's a lot to learn from watching G2 games because their macro has really leveled up. Really, really, really. Just watch that game against KC. Watch the spring, the winter game also against KC. They are really, really good macro wise. And DK today, they almost beat T1. DK does not belong in my top 10. I'm sorry, but they don't. I think that how alive though, I think that they have strong enough individual players to actually, you know, beat out G2 and make the position just unplayable for G2. That's my main concern. Because keep in mind, like if you if you think about the Hawa Life roster, okay, you have Doran, you have Peanut, Zeka, and of course Viper Delight. Those are tough players to break through if you come from the LEC, you know? These players might look bad when they play against T1 or Gen G, but there's layers to these games, you know? Zeka of Ari Mili Champs is also a liability. I think it's a liability against better teams. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. So the next in line here, I think that it's uh, like we're just going to do a top 10. I'm a big fan of World Elite. I, I like World Elite. I think they are a very solid roster. I think that um, I think that they are very complete team. I like Iwondi. I really like Iwondi, really. I, I think that Iwondi and um, like Fofo, Wayward, Hang, like this is just a very complete team. Um, I'm going to place them here. I think that they are the next team in line. I cannot put KT. Why would I put KT even over Damwon? Um, KT and Damwon, I, I, I don't think... I think World Elite is, is, is better. World Elite is better, guys. KT and Damwon, I can't put them out there. I can't put them up there. So, this is just a top 10, 10 list because after that, I think it becomes a little bit funky. Here you kind of pick your poison, right? It's like you pick your poison, which team do you like? You know, it's like, what team do you like here? You know, it's like, it's either IG, it's either NIP. You like little showmaker. Anyone's legend, fuck those guys. Anyone's legend, screw those guys. They make my previous TLS look very bad. Kwangdu freaks, no way. No way. These teams don't belong. It's like it's either it's between IG and Damwon, really. That's 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 what it's between, in my opinion. I think that it's it's between these two. I like Leon. I like I like um, Arn. IG and their. Um, you know, IG versus FPX is an absolute banger, in my opinion. Absolute banger. Very exciting banger. They lost to LNG in a very tragic way. So there's that. Here is just a pick your poison type of thing. 
because these teams are both flawed, both very flawed. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking now if I would want to change anything. I'm thinking if I would change anything, nothing really stands out to me. It's like, um, you know, all of these teams here, like they are all on... They, there's something wrong with all of these teams. There's something wrong with all of these teams. DK on the G2, Yamaro on the Zaza. I think I think that one is not that great, man. You know these teams these teams all land here, no close to each other. Right? Keep in mind, I repeat, this is current form, current patch, where I view the team right teams right now. And um what someone asked, what would G2 need would G2 need to do to get to A tier? Like they need to have a proven fucking track record of being able to hold it, hold it down. Hold it down against um you know top level competition. When and we when we talk top level, it's just the the nameplates here just are a little bit too too much. I think World Elite is a very complete team. I repeat as well, like here, the difference between these two teams is very small. Very small. Like that's why they're on the same tier, right? How a life could be G2? Of course it could. I'm not saying G2, like I'm not saying, I'm not saying uh, that uh, G2 won 10 out of 10 games are going to beat World Elite. No, no, no. That's not what this is, right? Like if they're on the same tier, it's like, oh, I would slightly favor this team here, you know? Yeah, that's that's where we're at. That's where we are at currently. This would be my current form tier list. Current form. Current patch. Current level. Current form. What's your favorite NA team? Genji could be on S+. We're basically like being number one in S is basically S+. It doesn't matter if G2 goes undefeated in spring, as long as they don't prove themselves internationally, they can't get to A. Uh, the thing is, like, there's only so far the eye test can go. You get me? There's only so far the eye test can go. I am not looking at every ruffle file, looking at every detail of the lane face and making a comparison. Like, I'm, I'm very limited to the games that we have. Um, so it's very hard to draw that com comparison because in competition, resistance is very important. Like if G2, for example, the conversation of G2 that they should sack spring and just go boot camp. But if they go boot camp, you know, some of the biggest lessons and biggest points of resistance, biggest points of resistance that you get is in competition. So being in competition is super, super important. And having that resistance in competition is also super important. That happens with the daily, right? That's why, like, LPL is a very hard league to win. LPL is probably the hardest league to win. LCK is between T1 and Genji every time, right? It's like, um, it's T1, Genji, you need to be on one of these teams. But LPL, bro, like LPL, they, they have like some, they have some crazy demons hiding in like the, the goofiest teams. Like, it's tiring, bro. And then the playoff format is, it's rough. It's, it's, it's very tough to, to win the LPL. You know? That doesn't mean that it's like LPL average is super fucking high. LCK average is 
still high, but the median, let's say the median is very low. Okay. How about we do an LSE one two? You want to do an LSE one two? Let's do an LSE one. G two. Wow. Fanatic. And where is Mad Lions? Where's Rogue? I don't see Rogue. Where's Rogue? Koi. Fuck. <laughs> the Spanish fans are gonna be up in arms, guys. Where's KC? There's no KC here. Let me find the, the tier list, the different tier list maker. Bro, why is it like numbered like this? It looks so goofy, man. Whatever. Bro, I have to fucking scroll forever, bro. I know Fnatic had a pretty goofy throw against Team Heretics. So, putting Rogue here. Oh shit, LPL is on. I forgot LPL is on. Alright, let's wrap this up, do a quick AMA and then go to LPL guys. What team is this? What the fuck is that? Is that Giants? Yeah, it would look something like this, I think. I think I think it would look like this. Yeah, this, this will be mine, this will be mine. You guys ask me anything, ask me anything guys, give me your questions. This is the moment. Get it out of your system. Best logo tier list. What matchup would you most love to see now globally? I would love to see Genji versus Billy Billy. That's the five. I think that would be super exciting. And... Uh, would really, really uh, answer the questions. Why do you think Mad Lions is so good? I think that Alvaro and Eloy are just a very, very powerful engine. Really, 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 really powerful engine. I think uh, these guys drive games well. They have very, very good awareness of, of tempo, set good tempo traps. And I think that they connect well in terms of how they play the early game. And I think that's uh, very dangerous. 
And I think that they are very creative in their draft. And I think that brings uh, an advantage. Yeah, that brings an advantage. I like my lines. I think a bit of both. This current form, Spring Speed predict Prediction, I think it's a bit of both. What do you think are the main points stopping G2 from it succeeding internationally? So, basically, it's very important to understand that the world's format, like, you can have a bad day and it can ruin your world championship, right? It's like, NRG really performed out of their mind and G2 performed quite poorly on the same day. That's a part of competition, right? A big part of competition is to make sure that your floor is as high as possible, not only your ceiling, right? And at that moment, two things coincided because there's a lot at play when it comes to five playing against five performing on the same day, right? That's a big part of competition, knowing how to perform at all times. And on that day, two things met. Uh, overperforming NRG and an underperforming G2. And that's the part of competition. We've seen great teams falter, right? We've seen great teams at previous World Championships falter and, and drop and not figure out a way to play it. Because a lot of people isolate that NRG series, but the wins that G2 got against Damwon and also against Weibo were quite fraudulent wins. Those were best of one wins that are very tough to replicate. Very tough to replicate. Because Kellen gave away that series. Weibo were 10k gold ahead, you guys remember. And additionally, additionally, Caps was playing Oriana. He had to do magic to win. So in my mind, G2 had a poor performance at the tournament. Poor form at that tournament. When it comes to MSI, we can't expect, guys, we can't expect a European team or a North American team to do well at a tournament like MSI. Why? Because LPL and LCK are sending their top two teams it's going to be T1, JNG, Billy Billy, Top Esports as an example. Maybe LPL changes, maybe. That shit. It's like doing well at MSI is a non factor. So basically, Worlds is where it's at. Worlds is where it's at. You need a little bit of luck, a little bit of a drawing. But I like that G2, you know, G2 is on a good path, man. G2 is on a good path. Macro-wise, really, guys, G2 macro is T. It's it's like it's so inspired by T1 macro, really, man. The way they take vision around mid, the jungle and support, how they play to spot people and play very disjointed, but at the same time they're pursuing the same thing. G2's macro is really, really high tier, man. Really high tier, and that makes me excited because G2 last year were dominating because they had this fist. And they did everything they could to fit it into anyone's mouth. And then when they played against Pays and Delight, they keep their fucking mouth closed. They bite back. You lose your hand. Because you remember, right? G2, Draven, Kalista, Jaime Dinger. Fucking break your turret, dive your turret, 10k gold lead, boom. What happened at MSI? Shit, these guys don't die, they don't die, you get me? BB as well, he's improving, he is improving, he is improving. I think that the top lane pool, Wunder being back, irrelevant, you know, Adam, Photon playing better, you know, the top lane pool is not that bad. People always say, talk about European top laners, bro. How about the European ADs, man? European ADs, man.
Anyhow, next question, guys. It's like Han Sama is broken because he's pulling bands every game. He's pulling bands. Every game he's pulling bands. That's already crazy. If you had to construct a team of players you have previously coached to fight alien invaders in BO5, who would you pick? But I've had to have coached them, right? Can I take them from like... Um, can I take them from specific years? Or do it has to be now? Like it has to be... It has to be now. So basically, can I take like a 2019 Wunder? Can I take that? Or does it have to be current Wunder? All right. Can it be players that I played with? Okay, do both. So, okay. 2021 upset Hilly. 2021 upset Hilly, Bolle. Twenty nineteen Wonder Give me a twenty twenty four Razorg Mid lane, mid lane, mid lane. So mid lane I have like Humanoid, I have Niski, I have Jizuke, I have Nuke Duck. Guys, I must have coached them. I didn't coach them. You guys are mentioning way too many players I didn't coach. Caps for mid. Yeah, it was like, guys, I didn't coach Caps. You're missing the question. I will take a 2021, 2021 humanoid. Twenty twenty one humanoid. There you go. Who the hell was mid when you called sandbox? Fate. And then we had the uh, dove on the dove on the bench. He didn't say Keiko players, guys. Right, I put upset them. Why is Vitality so low? Oh, Vitality could climb. Vitality could climb. This one is the one I'm uh, not sure about. This one I'm not sure about. This is the one that, this is the wild card, I think. This is definitely the wild card. Make a tier draft where every lane is an LEC. Ah, oh, that's too, too much, too much. It's something that I would have to think about a lot more, and I think it's too much. What eight teams are going to MSI? G2. I think it's when it comes to Europe, you have to look at the points, right? Like Mad Lions might just qualify when they get third place. Like let's say I don't know if I don't know if Mad Lions qualify by getting third place when Fnatic gets second place. I don't know if that qualifies them, because G2 is going for sure. But then the second team, we don't expect anyone else to win Spring, and Mad Lions has points. The so Mad Lions might qualify off of points. But I, I, I don't know the exact point system, so maybe Mad, maybe Fnatic getting, getting uh, fourth. Maybe Fnatic getting fourth and second beats Mad Lions getting second and third. Maybe. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe. The spring should be more valuable, but I don't know exactly by how much it is. Spring is 1.5x points. Okay, then, then probably it's safe. It's like, the more and more I look at this, it's like... like all of these teams are kind of lumped together. All of these teams are kind of lumped together. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to head back to LPL watching. Let's watch some LPL. Apparently LPL is still on. Short, short vo voice of your model, but let's watch LPL.